Wait, I thought that was for your fourth day. It is, but I've got to get it in there. Oh. Yeah. Oh, oh show me the piece. Show me the piece. It's a little lump of carbon. That is quite a small piece of pre-preg, yeah. pre-preg carbon. Yeah. Wow. And you're going to fit it where? It's got to go inside and glue under the toggle inside. So it's going to be a little bit challenging. How are you going to do that? Don't know yet? I've got some ways. I've got some tricks. you got some, you got a plan? Taco man? i got a plan, Taco man. Yeah. It's not going to be easy, but you got this. Oh wait, show me this thing. So I filmed this yesterday. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I'm going to round all this off now. Put some laminate over it, stiffen it up a little bit because it's still just a little bit thin. And then have light inside. Yeah. It's got eyebrows. What's your special goo? My special goo? Tef Jowl. Tickle, Tef Jowl. The best there is. What does that do? Does that stop it? Is that a glue or does that just stop it reacting? It's a um, anti corrosion uh, paste. So it stops um, galvionic um, corrosion between dissimilar materials. Um, yeah, it's probably worth mentioning, isn't it, that carbon doesn't like metal? Yeah, carbon, carbon and metal don't get it on very well at all, particularly aluminium. Um, yeah, it will um, produce rust stains very, very quickly um, in my, even my nitronic rod here, which is um, not known for rusting that well. Um, but yeah, because of the dissimilar materials in the salty environment, um, yeah, galvanic corrosion happens very quickly when carbon's involved. If it, uh, if you have aluminium and um, carbon touching, and the carbon, uh, the aluminium is bare, like unanodized or hasn't got any um, TEF gel or insulator between it, that Aluminium will last, well we used to do it on our skiffs and I first learnt this lesson on a 14 foot skiff with a carbon fibre bowsprit, put some aluminium pop rivets on the fitting on the end um, and it took three days in a regatta and um, it fizzed through the pop rivets and my fitting flew out downwind which was pretty uncool but um, yeah that was my first lesson with carbon and aluminium and galvionic corrosion and how fast it happens. Uh, so yeah, this Tef gel stuff, best thing since sliced bread. Can't, can't, you can't, no boat should be without a syringe or a tub of it. It's just 
it's gold. It's bloody expensive, but it's gold. You just can't not have it. Um, it stops screws from getting jammed and all the rest of it. Um, one of the issues is though, actually you gotta be careful with what screws you use it on because um, it is a little bit of a lubricator as well. Screws will come undone. Um, so be careful on what screws you use it on. If it's not, not Tef gel, then you Loctite it. So it's either Tef gel or Loctite um, or Duralac. I was about um, to say, where's your Duralac? I'm sure that's your favorite. <laughs> uh, love, hate relationship with Duralac. <laughs> Yeah, Duralax uh, was the predecessor to Tefgel, um, but Duralac is, um, let's say, not very people friendly. It oh, is, okay. Yeah, it's extremely toxic, um, but it's really, really, really good stuff. And it, Duralac also dries um, and hardens, whereas this doesn't. It stays as a greasy gel. Um, so they're, they're slightly different. Oh, there you go. Well, I have noticed there's quite a bit of Tef gel showing up on the boat as opposed to Duralac, so yeah, now uh, I know why. And I will actually use uh, Duralac like a yellow Loctite. Uh, I've started nicknaming it. So um, if you want a screw to go somewhere and not, um, not fall out, but you don't want it Loctite in, um, with the full strength of Loctite, and you want the galvanic corrosion resistance, um, mm. Duralac is actually a good option. How's your dragon? I'm filming you now because we do the best YouTube instructional videos on YouTube. <laughs> um, you covered up your little pig snout chain. I have. Right. I'll paint on. No, it needs to be fire. I need to breathe fire. <laughs> Are you going to clear coat that with carbon? Yeah. Ah, uh, sorry. Clear coat the carbon. Yes. Clear coat. Nice to have a little bit of um, carbon plate hanging around, isn't it? Yeah. And what do you got there? Um, fixing up a bit of a cork up. Oh, I'm filming you fixing up your mistakes, are you? Yeah. Am I? Oh dear. 
and didn't quite get my hole positions quite right. So I'm now potting the um, screws. There's a lot of secret techniques going on here right now. Um, you going to share those secrets or are they oh, secret secrets? Yeah, uh, these are proper secret secrets. Um, I've only told two other people how to do this. Roscoe is one of them. Uh, yeah, out of bed and pot screws and be able to screw them out easily the next morning. Oh, need a bit more light now. Well, you got it painted. First coat, just one coat? Yeah, one coat of white. One coat of white on, so at least now we can see a boat that's semi one colour, but the rest of the boat still looks pretty grubby. Um, second coat tomorrow? Yeah, hopefully I'll get two coats on, so one coat in the morning, denib it, denib it, coat. Hopefully it's a warm, dry day. And then in the afternoon, um, final coat. Is it raining tomorrow? Uh, it's not made up its mind yet. Oh, look at that beautiful sunset. And then, um, what, four weeks and we're off to France? Uh, that's the current... Um, Possible situation. Uh -huh. um, so, if we've got this painted, how long before we can put the tramp on? Uh, next day. Cool. So, maybe by the weekend we can start on the trampoline. Yeah. yeah I want to. Um, I need to. I need to have the trampoline finished before the weekend. 